Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us, and I say that in a very particular special way. If this happens to be your very first time to be tuning in to our time of encouraging each other in our walk with the Lord, encouraging each other to uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, particularly using the tool called the Gospel Tract, and then we want to encourage each other in our understanding of the Word of God. Now, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ruth, Ruth and chapter 3. If you can, reach over, get your Bible, and join me there, Ruth chapter 3. Our focus will be on verses 6 through 13. We are doing really a verse-by-verse study here in this great love story, the book of Ruth. I've got a gospel track that I mentioned here a moment ago, and just in case, you are unfamiliar with that term. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Will You Live Forever? with a question mark. Well, how would you answer that question? Do you know what the answer is? Well, the answer obviously is yes, but that really gets us into the track, and I'll say more about that gospel tract here in a minute. Let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Uh, Along the way today, I'm going to use an old phrase. That old phrase is entitled, getting cold feet. Getting cold feet. Now, I do know that we have people who listen to the broadcast from other countries, so please let me take the time to explain for their benefit what we here in the United States mean when we say somebody is getting cold feet. When we use that phrase, we're talking about a person becoming afraid to take an important step. Most often when we talk about a man or a woman getting cold feet, we're referring to their wedding day. At the last moment, they decide, well, they just don't want to go through this because they're afraid. They don't know what's coming. Well, here today in the book of Ruth, chapter 3, a man is going to get cold feet. But this time, though, a woman, the woman he loves, will give him literal cold feet. And boy, is he happy. Happy. Uh, get your Bible. Let me show you what I mean. I mentioned this gospel tract a moment ago. For 81 years, our ministry here, Bible Tracks Incorporated, the parent ministry behind this radio broadcast, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing good, rock solid gospel tracks, Bible tracks explaining the way of salvation and giving them away uh, free of charge all over the world and in different languages. This one, Will You Live Forever, has been around our stable of tracks for a long time because it's just so clear. It begins by quoting the fact that, yes, you will live forever, but the issue is where? Where will it be in heaven or not? It then quotes out of the book of the Revelation, chapter 20, how that a great white throne is there and God judges. And then the track begins to explain that the judge of a man is a man, the man Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say in this gospel tract that if Christ had not been risen from the dead, we have no hope of eternal life. It talks about what the Bible means by the idea of being judged. And then it explains with great clarity the way out of being judged for all eternity in the place called the lake of fire because of not receiving Christ as Savior. There is a way out the way of love and grace provided through the Lord Jesus Christ. This clear, simple gospel track, Will You Live Forever, has been powerfully used over the decades. Let me send it to you, please. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. Have your pen and paper ready. Not only can you take notes, but you'll have it there ready to jot down how to give us your name and address so we can send you that free sample packet. 
Well, if your Bible is open to the book of Ruth, chapter 3, I'm going to read some highlighted verses. First of all, verse 6 says this, And she, Ruth, went down to the floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law bade her, what he told her to do. Verse 8, And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaiden, for thou art a near kinsman. Verse 11 now. And now, Boaz says, And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Stop, please, with a reading right there. Already this week, we have talked about the plan being made here. We see the action taking place of that plan in our verses in our paragraph, verses 6 to 13. I called paragraph number 1, verses 1 through 5, I called that one consultation. This paragraph, verses 6 to 13, I call compliance, because here, Ruth complies with Naomi's plan. And just in case you are not familiar with the story of Ruth, here is the plan. The man Boaz has made overtures towards Ruth, indicating his interest in her that she would become his wife. Now, at the time of threshing the harvest grain, Ruth goes secretly to let Boaz know that she wants to accept his affections. She secretly goes to where he is sleeping. This is an open-air public area. There she uncovers his feet so his feet will get cold, and she lays down at his feet until he wakes up. Well, sure enough, Boaz's feet get cold, he wakes up and finds Ruth there. He asks who she is in verse 9, and at this point he says some really godly things. Now here is my four-point outline for this paragraph, verses 6 to 13. Verses 6 and 7 I call careful following. Careful following. Ruth carefully follows Naomi's plan. Verses 8 and 9 I call them cold feet, and I've already explained that. In the next section, verses 10 and 11, I call character facts. Character facts, I'm going to return to those here in just a moment. I think it'd be wise for you to have something on which you can jot down three character facts that Boaz makes known about Ruth. And finally, verses 12 and 13, these verses I call a committed fellow. A committed fellow. Boaz here is committed. He openly states he's committed to play the role of the kinsman redeemer, which not only has immediate aspects for Ruth, but has great picture for us about the Lord Jesus Christ. But come back now to verses 10 and 11. This section that I have labeled character facts. When Boaz wakes up in the middle of the night with cold feet, he understands that it is Ruth that has come, and she has given a signal a signal of her willingness to accept the romantic offers of Boaz. But at this point, Boaz identifies three character facts about Ruth. The first one is this, her kindness, her kindness. She has acted with mercy and she has done a beautiful thing. He has said yes to Boaz's desire to be more than just her boss in the workaday world. In his eyes, Ruth has done him a great honor. When a woman of great character chooses to marry a man, he has been shown great mercy. Listen to verse 10 again. And he, Boaz, said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou hast followed not young men, whether poor or rich." In the first half of verse 10, he talks about her kindness. But now we find fact number two, still in verse 10. This fact is her maturity, her maturity. Verse 10 ends with Boaz saying, Thou hast followed not young men, whether rich or poor. Now, it's this statement by Boaz that causes us who study the word of God to believe that Boaz was 
well, a fair amount older than Ruth. But rather than seeking a new husband that's nearer her age to offer her youthful excitement, Ruth chooses to accept Boaz's offers and his movement of romance here. She chooses to accept a proven man, a man of proven character and solid in life. But then we come to verse 11, the third fact, which is her virtuousness. Listen to verse 11. And now, Boaz goes on, my daughter, notice the phrase, my daughter, probably because of his older age, and now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people, that is Bethlehem, doth know that thou art a virtuous woman." She is a woman of virtue. Now, that's how verse 11 ends. The Hebrew word here, translated virtue, has really the basic meaning of force or power or ability. Force, power, or ability. It's used in chapter 2 in verse 1 of this book, where there Boaz is called a wealthy man. The word wealthy translates the same word virtue here. He knew how to accomplish things using his money. It's going to be used again in chapter 4 and verse 11. There, the people of Bethlehem are going to say just wonderful things about Ruth, but they're going to challenge her to be a woman like Rachel and Leah. Now, those two ladies made Israel, the nation of Israel, great by the children they bore that became the tribes of Israel. The people of Bethlehem are going to challenge Ruth to make Bethlehem great through her future children, and she does. Through Ruth's family comes King David and eventually King Jesus. Here is a really, really useful takeaway lesson from these verses. Ruth had the power to move people. She moved people. She was a Moabitist, but she moved the people of Bethlehem to like her. She moved Boaz to want to marry her. She had this ability to move people and to get things accomplished, but not by physical force, not by batting her eyes, but by the force of her character. And by the way, In the New Testament, God describes pastors and deacons as men who lead by the force of their character, not by fear, not by being domineering and pushing people around and being bossy. It's amazing how leaders in local churches and leaders in home who use gentleness of character to move their local churches and their family, those kind of leaders not only see people stay long-term in their local churches, but they develop tremendous relationships within their family and their children want to emulate them. Tell me, are you a person who leads by character, or do you have to try to lead people by domineering? Jesus asks his disciples to be servant leaders. Lead through your service and lead through your character. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 808-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.